I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some of your time with us. I'm really excited for you tonight to meet uh, Sharina Paxson. I appreciate you coming and sharing your story with us. It's an amazing story and it's so similar to mine, except that it's happened now in just the last few months, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we usually do, tell us a little bit, of, little bit about your background as a Latter-day Saint. Well, I grew up in uh, Newburgh, Oregon, okay. just a little town 45 minutes south of um, Portland. Yeah. And um, I grew up really strong in the church. Um, family was active. Yeah, my family was active, very strong. My parents were well known within the stake and throughout several stakes. And um, we were a pretty popular family in the church. And just one of the good, strong, yes, Latter-day Saints. Yes, families, very huh? strong, and our family was very much looked up to. Yeah. So they still are. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll probably get into that a little bit yeah. more, maybe. But, yeah. Uh, so. So you just you baptized at eight, I guess. Mm -hmm. and yep. Baptized did all at the eight. Young primary things and all yep. the young women stuff. And yep. President of the. My maids were you yeah. Yeah, um, I believe Beehive, My Maid. I don't think I was the president of Laurel, but was yeah. in the um, council and okay. so our presidency. Never so. any question that the church was true. That was just no, not, not no. Of, I never really questioned it right. as, a, uh, as a child. You just yeah. knew that was the way you were raised. Yeah. Did you take seminary? I did take seminary. Oh, and yeah. How was that? I enjoyed it. Yeah. I liked it. Um, I. Was that it early was early morning? morning. Yeah, it was early morning. Because you don't get credit like no, that in Utah. No. Get to, yeah, yeah, it was early morning. There were um, maybe one or two wards in our stake that did. That got together. Um, yeah. That did it during the school hours. Yeah. But I felt bad for those kids because that they had to use up one of their electives to oh. do seminary. Um, but I never had to give up an elective, because although you got, did the early yeah. morning. Although there was an early morning elective at the same time, like show choir that I really wanted to do, but I gave it up for seminary. So oh, okay. yeah, but that's okay. So, oh. so yeah. you just kind of go on in life. Did you get a patriarchal blessing? I did get a patriarchal oh, blessing. Okay. Yeah, I was twelve years old. So well, you're twelve. That's mm -hmm. a little yeah, younger than 12, normal, yeah. isn't it? Or yeah. Did so. you did that? I mean, it's just again, it's just all part of what we mm -hmm. know, right? As we're growing up, and yeah. it's just part of part of our life. We yeah. don't know anything else. So, so what happens then as you get into high school? Anything that? Well, I um, I found my first um, best friend before. Uh, well, first best friend that I didn't um, that I made on my own <laughs> without oh. um, without our fr our families being best friends. Um, at school or at school yeah. yeah so i met her at school and um and she's a christian oh. and um we're still best friends and oh, good. um and then i um found more christian friends and um and we were all pretty tight knit and um did a lot of things together and my favorite thing to do with all of them was to sit down and just have religious discussions and all of us would bring in all of our different um, um, thoughts Be and beliefs. our beliefs yeah. to the table, um, Christian, Mormonism, you know, whatever 
and even different beliefs within Christianity. And just, just you just, teenagers, we were just huh? all te you kids? just teenagers, just talking. Wow. And oh, it was so uplifting, and I loved it, loved it, loved it. And um, and that's my favorite thing about um, living outside of Utah is having that um, that gathering of yeah. different religions coming together and talking. Were you surprised at all with what they were teaching, or were you surprised they didn't, didn't believe what you were teaching, or? Um, no, I don't think we were really surprised because we all knew that we all believed in different things. Okay. And, and so we would ask it. each other questions, what yeah. each other believed and stuff. And and we never um, discounted each other's beliefs and oh. we didn't understand so each very other's respectful beliefs. Yes, we were very other. respective. Yeah. Yeah. Did you bring the Book of Mormon, for example? to? Yeah, the we talked about the Book of Mormon. We talked about the Bible. We talked about, yeah. we probably talked about Pearl of Great Price. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We talked about Joseph Smith, for sure, you know. Yeah. Um, well, that's fascinating. Yeah, I loved it. Even oh, I still love those memories. So, yeah. um, but what amazes me is that, you know, I um, I didn't really understand what they were trying to tell me. You know, um, what they were trying to teach me. I don't even remember what they were trying to teach me. I know that we did talk about. It'd be the fun Bible. to go back and listen. Yes, to what I they wish were I could go share. back and, and I and now I could be like, oh, um, now I get yeah, it. You I know. Understand. Yeah, and so and yeah. I and I messaged all of them and I said, hey, you know, I'm actually leaving the church and I'm becoming a Christian now and they're the all I could hear them all shouting for joy Is that over right? Facebook <laughs> you oh, know, um, private message I could yeah. hear all of them shouting for joy and just and yeah. so now she gets it yep huh? yeah well so. so but you're active through uh, into into your past high school years mm -hmm. of course and then uh, yeah you, you what happens in yeah. life and you well um so I'm um, still in high school you know I noticed that all my Christian friends were a lot more Christ-like than um, all, than many, if not all, of the LDS um, and, kids that I and saw. What do you mean by Christ-like? Were they the um, you know in the in the LDS church? Um, you know, even in even in Oregon, not just Utah, in Oregon, um, especially in the youth that we had, there were a lot of cliques, a lot of, and a lot of groups. And you know, yeah. if you were in one of those groups, you were kind of an outcast and mm. I was one of the outcasts uh -huh. and there was actually it's funny because there was actually a group of us that were outcasts but we never joined together to become our you own group. You should have become your we own group. We should have yeah huh? as adults we did but yeah. um, I'm still friends with those girls. Well but. I just I always um, notice a certain pride yeah and a certain judgmentalness mm -hmm. and anybody that was a little different. That yeah there's definitely in. a lot of judgments and stuff yeah. in the Audius church okay. and um, and never yeah. Okay. Yeah, I could just I could see the hypoc hypocrisy, yeah. but I just counted that as you know, yeah. well, it's the people, not the church, you know. Okay. And um, but I always wondered why are Christians more Christ-like than <laughs> just LDS, something that you, know? you had in the yeah. back of your mind. There, but I no. but I put that as as I hear many um, ex Mormons or you know ex ex Mormons say, I just put that on the shelf, you know. Right, right. And so I just put that on the shelf, but it was always in the back of my mind. Why mm. are they more Christ like? Mm. And what is it that they have that now did th these Christian girls, I guess, girls yeah, ever girl, invite girls you, and boys, yeah. Invite you to their church? Did you ever go to Um I never went to the church to their church, but I did go to Bible study with them one time. Oh. It was an interesting experience. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. It was interesting. A little more um, about Jesus and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Well what happens after high school then and into life? So after high school I um I moved to Utah. Yeah. Huge culture shock. <laughs> shock. I I was in culture shock for probably five, six years. Church, I've been here. Church wise, you mean? Just the Just, culture. Oh the in culture, Utah. okay. Utah, yeah. Okay. Just the culture. Um and yeah. It it took me a long time to get over the culture shock and I've been here for eight years so it's only been a few years that I've been over the culture Feel, shock. Feeling like a more normal at yeah, least understanding yeah. what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well I, as I ask is that church related culture shock or just Utah? I think it's both. Oh. I th yeah. Okay. I, I have found that um, and, you know Utahns may get upset at this but <laughs> I have found that um, in the in Utah you know most everybody are is more are Mormons yeah, and the kids feel that in order to be different they have to do 
drugs or alcohol or sex, you know, to be different. And, mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I didn't really see that firsthand, but I'd heard a lot of things and, and I saw it in adult, in adults too, you know, I mm -hmm. just, you know, they needed to find some way to feel different, you know, because everybody is the same, you know, just and, uh, and also, a um, way of rebelling or something. Mm -hmm, maybe. Yeah. And I, okay. and I've talked to other, um, people who grew up in Utah and who said, yes, it is that way. So, yeah. okay. um, and then also the, one of the other biggest culture shocks for me, was that as you know, as you, I just told you, I grew up with having religious discussions all the time, yeah. weekly at least. Yeah. And here you never have religious discussions. Yeah. We can go a long time mm -hmm. with Mormons, at yeah. least I, my experience was, we can go a long time without yeah. talking about. The only time you do is in church yeah. or, um, or if you're being visit taught by yeah. home teachers or visiting teachers. Yeah, it's very strange. Yeah. You don't have that openness mm -hmm. and, and, and Because dialogue. everybody knows what everybody believes, so there's yeah. no point in talking about it. And then recently I just found out that the church actually discourages from having Bible study or Book of Mormon store studies like, like in Individual groups. Yeah. Yeah. And which I never knew. And I was like, oh, that's why we don't do it. But I don't that think I've heard sense. anything official on that, but yeah. I can understand that. Yeah, I don't know if it's official, official, Bible but that's Bible study what could I've be seen. dangerous because yeah. you're studying the Bible and it mm -hmm. says something yeah. that we may not know. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you eventually get married mm -hmm. and tell us about. Yep. Um, so Braden and I, um, Braden actually, um, what is it? He crashed my, um, my young single adult ward of prayer and he, um, he was in another ward and we were living in the same apartment complex. And so, um, our ward prayers met in the same building. Your ward prayers? Ward prayers, yeah. in in single adults, um, in Utah. The, uh, their single adult wards get together and they have ward prayers every Sunday. And he came in on it? Yeah, he came in on it because oh. it was cold. He didn't want to wait outside for his ward prayer and he didn't want to wait in his apartment. So, oh, okay. um, so he came in and crashed my ward prayer and I had seen him around the apartment complex. So I finally decided to sit by him and talk to him and <laughs> took off from there. <laughs> so Eventually get married in yeah. the Portland Temple. Yeah, we got married in the Portland Temple. Yeah. yeah. My favorite temple still is I still think it's the most beautiful it temple. Is, uh, mm -hmm. I've been in there. It's a beautiful, it's beautiful temple. Yeah. A lot of woodwork. And now had you had you um uh, always had the goal, I'm sure, of being married yes. in the temple. There was yes. never any question no, about that. No, there was no question about that. Okay. Even when I strayed as a teenager, you know, like did things I wasn't supposed to, yeah. I knew that was that I was wanted to, yeah. to get married in the temple, and so it helped to bring me back onto yeah. the path, you know, and yeah, to that's a goal not way. go and not do more <laughs> sins, you know. So we always be ready to be able mm -hmm. to go to the temple. Yeah. yeah. And how was that experience? Did you enjoy that? To get married in the temple? Well, to, to go through the temple through for your own temple, endowments yeah. and all that. Um, when I went through the endowments, it was, you know, I think in symbolisms. So it's just it's just natural for me to see. The so that felt very normal yeah, in there. So that felt normal. So, okay. so I could um, see and understand the symbolisms in the temple. Yeah. And, but at the same time, I was like, oh, I could see how people think we're a cult. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Oh. Because, yeah, I, I did. Yeah, some of the things it was It was a little weird, but, yeah. um, but I also understood some yeah. of the things. Um, but my mom, she said that she could just tell that I that I felt at home. And I was like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. She yeah. was thrilled to have you yeah. there, I'm sure. Yeah. So was. what happens kind of to bring things around a little bit for you. You now you you're active now with your mm -hmm. husband. He's a return missionary. We'll meet yeah. him next week. Yes. But um, so you go through and and just kind of live life. You're both active in the church. Yeah, or? we'll be um um so we got married in Oregon, but we lived in um lived in Utah. Okay. Um our entire marriage. And the first couple of wards I I didn't have a license for um, the first couple years of our marriage, a car license, oh, and so okay. I so I couldn't drive anywhere. Yeah. And um, my husband is in the military, and so he would be away for like two to six weeks, and I didn't have a way to get to church, mm -hmm. and I didn't know anybody in the ward, so I wasn't gonna call anybody, and it wasn't close enough for me to walk, and yeah. so. You know, we would go to church for the first couple of weeks, and then he would be away. And then, like six weeks later, we'd come back to church, 
nobody would talk to us. They would stare at us. They would give us dirty <laughs> looks. We would say hi with a you know happy smile, nice wave at them, and they just gave us dirty looks. And that's when I started see seeing and understanding why some people, I guess it's not as many as people think, but some people do leave the church because of being how they're treated being offended. And, um, and being offended. And it was a chore to go to church because mm. um, because people looked down at us because, you know, so we weren't going to, to church. Go. Yeah. Well, I don't and know so if everybody has that experience, but right, but I do, I it do, do think ha it happens. It does happen, Absolutely. but not as often as LDS think it does. Right. Yeah. You know, and when you're think on, it's mostly uh, because of and when you're on the end of that, mm -hmm. or when you're on the receiving yes. end, it, yeah. it can be very awkward. So I have a lot more sympathy for those who leave the church because of that. Oh. And so I mean, we're experiencing that right now. <laughs> yeah, I can <laughs> but, imagine. And so people a think bit. that us not going yeah. to church is because of that, but you know, that's yeah. just yeah. that's just a piece of it. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's not the whole story. So tell us so. a little bit about what does happen with your spiritual life. So um, it's. Right now it's June, and um, it's all started back in July for us. So it's only been five months. So um, July of 2014. Oh wait, January. January. Sorry. January. Yeah, wow. it started in January. Okay. So it's only been five months. Um, but in January, um, I I started feeling um, protective of my younger sister because I'm going to start getting teary eyed. <laughs> Um, she left the church four years ago, oh. and um, she had become a Christian, and I saw her life just completely change. I mean, she's doing some things that, you know, LDS people don't agree with, but her spirituality has completely changed. She's, she's feasting on the Word. She has a relationship with God, and I saw that, and, I, and um, when people would say, Oh, those poor people who have lost the church. They're lost. They're yeah. They're they've strayed, and we just need to remember the promise that if we teach them the right, that they'll come back. And I started getting upset and defensive in behalf of my sister, and um, and I would come home from church just just upset and started um, vocally questioning to Braden and saying, um, you know, just talking about the way that people are treated in the church, the hypocrisy Again, the judgment and the judgments and, yeah. and how how can my sister be an apostate if she's closer to God now? Like that doesn't make sense. I you know, know, like if she's closer to God now, she's not an apostate. She's not gonna go to hell because she's left the church, yeah. you know, she's isn't that amazing? She's on the path to God. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. So that started making you think. Mm -hmm. Did you start investigating? So my, yeah, and I and I've talked to my sister, and she said I wanted so bad to share the true gospel with with you guys and with the rest of the family, but God kept telling me no, be an example, and that is why because my sister was the example. Oh. So it was her example and seeing her feasting on the word that brought me to um, questioning. Um, the hypocrisy in the yeah. church. Yeah. Well, what kind of things did you so, learn that it affected you? Um, well, Braden, um, Braden started feeling comfortable um, because I was questioning about certain things, and he started feeling com comfortable um, vocally questioning his things. And little did I know, <laughs> that he was he was yeah, questioning, he was, and you were questioning. Yeah. And um, he he had taken, um, and he'll go more into this later, but yeah. he had taken art history at UVU and he had learned about the um what is it, the papyrus that supposedly Joseph for Abraham said, yeah. for the book of Abraham yeah and had learned that it's not I didn't know it about is. it yeah. either I didn't and either. um and so he had mentioned that I was like what wow. <laughs> and so um so then he started questioning church history and the validity and stuff like that and he was um I was like, well, what's your sources, you know, yeah. you know, because I, I wanted to get to the root of the sources, you know, I didn't want to just go off of what he was saying, you know, I wanted yeah. to, I wanted to know it for myself. So you started studying. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, no, oh. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, I, I told him, I knew that if we weren't careful, it could ruin our marriage. Oh. And we did not want that to happen. We didn't, we, but we respected that each of us needed to go on um, on a separate path if needs be you know we needed to go on a path that felt right for both of us and right. we wanted to honor each other 
and respect each other. And so I said, you know, I want you to to do your research, to do what you feel like you need to do, but I am not ready to see the things that you are seeing because he was only finding things online. He was um, <laughs> looking at John DeLynn's websites okay. and um, and looking at other things, and, and and but going to the links that are provided as well. That right. um, of the, the it's amazing links. what's out there, isn't there? Yeah, and it really starts teaching yeah. you what objective people are looking at. Yeah. You know? And so, so I was like, you know, you go ahead and do that, um, and I want us to keep talking because I don't want our marriage to get ruined. Yeah. But um, I'm not ready to look at that stuff. No, I, <laughs> I'm not. Keep that away from me. I'm not going to look at that. And he was like, okay, and he respected that, you know. Okay. But after a while, I noticed that he was going a lot faster than I was. You know, I thought it was going to take us years to make a final decision on what we were yeah. going to do. And every so often I would be like, okay, what do we believe now in regards to the church? You know, what what do we still believe? What do we not believe? Are we going to Because you certainly had church? a testimony yeah. of Joseph Smith, didn't you? Yeah, the and Book I, of Mormon yeah, and the temple I did. and everything. Yeah, And um, I never read the Book of Mormon all the way through, though. Oh. For some reason, I always had a desire to, but for some reason I could never do it. Hmm. And it always felt like a chore. I could get, you know, maybe a few books in, yeah. but I could never finish it for There's whatever reason. There's probably others like that that mm -hmm. haven't made it all the way through. Yeah, and I never felt comfortable giving out the Book of Mormon either if mm. I hadn't read it all the way through myself. Yeah. I was like, how can I expect somebody else to read Something. it all the way through if I haven't yeah. read it all the way through? So I did give it out a few times with my testimony in it, but... Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, but well, so do you, one thing you talked about was the warm, fuzzy feelings mm -hmm. and how different that is yeah. in Mormonism and so, Christianity. So Brayden had mentioned that Muslims, Catholics, Jews, you know, people of all religions feel warm, fuzzy into the, and, you know, they're like, you know, no. this is true because I am feeling this way. Yeah. Or, but we also feel it when we watch a good movie, read a good book, you know. And and I started getting mad. I understood what he was saying, and I sorry. And I knew what I knew that that was right, but I was mad about it because I was like, well, then what is the point of praying if yeah, how do if I that know is how true? do I know yeah. what yeah. answer I'm receiving receiving is from God or from Satan or from myself? Yeah. What is the point of praying? And um, and I was mad about it. And wow. But you so. kind of came up with the phrase, piercing of the heart. Yes. And that well, kind I, of explains a little yeah. bit more rather than a burning, mm -hmm. fuzzy feeling. Well, I, I didn't come up with that phrase myself, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Okay. Um, there was actually a um, video that I saw, on, um, saw online. I don't remember what it's called. It's about an hour long. Yeah. And it's um, a movie about other um, ex-Mormons who have left the church and... Yeah one of them started leaving the church because um while he was on his mission and um and i don't remember which one of them had said it um but had but mentioned that, that it was a piercing of the heart. of the heart yeah that's a good way to mm -hmm. explain it well our time is getting very close i can't oh, believe it's it. gone so <laughs> fast but i did want you to share a couple of things about how you feel now about jesus mm -hmm. and the bible uh, tell us a little bit about how you perceive Jesus as Mormon and now as a, yeah, um, as a Christian. You know, as Jesus said, um, when I was Mormon, um, I always wondered what God's purpose was. Because, um, and I'll explain that, like in the pre-existence in the LDS Church, um, you know, God had this council meeting and asked who was going to um, be the Savior. And Jesus and Satan both got up. And I always wondered, how come I wasn't one of them? You know, <laughs> I mean, besides the I've fact of, you know. Before, actually, but it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't more of being prideful. It was more of like, wanting to be protective of my brother. Yeah. Because I wouldn't want him to go through that. I would rather take that upon myself than him go through that. Wow. And so it wasn't, it wasn't a pride thing. It was more of me wanting to be protective of my big brother, you yeah. know. Um, but then Jesus said, um, you know, um, 
God be glory to, you know, yeah. um, you have the glory. You have God, the glory, you know. yeah. Um, and I always wondered, what is, what is God's purpose? Like, what does he do? Just, like, sit there on the throne and, like, delegate everything? Like, like to me, it seemed like God was very minimized in the LDS church. And I don't know if everybody saw, that's, noticed that. That's the way I felt. Like, I was but doing I, my own work. I yeah. wasn't about, I mean, they were there to help and to guide me along. Yeah. But I was the one that was progressing to become yeah. a God myself. Yeah, I, I, I needed them kind yeah. of to set I the example. I felt like God but was belittled, but Jesus was ra raised up. You know, that Jesus had a higher, I don't know. God. Yeah, oh. a higher role wow. than God. I mean, yeah. They never say that, you know, yeah. and, but that was just kind of my thoughts on it. And and I always knew that they were equal, but um, yeah. but now, you know, but now I know that they are equal, even though I've always known that. But now I know that they are equal um, and um, God does not have a body. He no. does not have a body. And well, even got a scripture yeah, there. It's like a, scripture right here, John chapter 4 verse 24 said and it's jesus himself speaking. who is speaking it jesus himself says god is a spirit yeah. and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth yeah and that that just blew me away like wow even jesus himself says that god is a spirit and then um and then in john chapter 5 verse 37 it says and the father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me ye have ne ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape kind of Not questions his body, joseph smith's his experience shape. doesn't it yes yeah yes well gosh i can't believe our time's gone so quickly i know so i quickly. wish it was longer <laughs> yeah we almost <laughs> this should be like time. an hour long <laughs> but i know i know this has just happened in the last few months mm -hmm. and yet once it's happened, your eyes are open. Yeah. Things are just different, aren't they? Yes, they are. I very mean, different. Jesus is different. He's now God. Mm -hmm. Grace, you're not working your way. Yes. In fact, if you're doing works to be saved, then you've discounted grace yes. completely. Yes. My um, one of my favorite things is that grace and being saved is just like Moses and the serpent staff, and all you have to do is just. All they had to do is just look at the serpent staff that and be healed. Yeah. It's that simple. Oh, Sharina, thank yeah. you so much for sharing your story <laughs> on that. Like I said, maybe we'll get more. We'll get some more stuff from Braden. Yes. He'll <laughs> help flesh this in. Yes. Hey, thanks for joining us here on the Ex Mormon Files, and we appreciate you watching. We'll see you next week. Good night.